Welcome back, kitty. We're going to paint this picture using two colors. While I do that, I'm going to share some more tips on visual storytelling. Sound good? Let's take off and have some fun. So I'll just go right ahead and make some swatches first. I'm only using two colors, yellow ochre and burnt sienna. It's good to test out the pigments with a few swatches so that I can see how they behave on the paper and see how they look after drying up. I'm using gouache paint by a Japanese brand called Nicker. I only have four tubes. The other two are zinc white and Prussian blue. I wanted to stick to a warm color palette for this sketch, so I ended up with these two. Alright, in case you haven't seen the first part of this video series, I highly recommend you watch that first, but if you want to skip to this one, that's also fine. In the last video, I pointed out that this series is going to focus on the first lesson I learned about visual storytelling. This is not going to be about drawing or painting techniques, although I will drop in a few brief comments about the medium I'm using and my sketching process, but we're not going to go into too much detail on that. We could probably discuss that in a different video series, but for now we're going to continue the discussion on the difference between visual storytelling versus visual communication. So, when was the last time you made a doodle on your notebook or a piece of paper? What did it look like? Was it trying to illustrate an abstract thought or an emotional state you had? Or was it just a representative drawing of something you physically saw or pictured in your head? In this video, I'm going to propose that visual storytelling uses a literary style to convey stories, whereas visual communication uses a promotional style to convey opinions. So we've already discussed that in visual communication, your starting point is a statement. You open your sketchbook with your mind already invested in the message, and you're just looking to make a pretty picture out of those thoughts. Whereas in visual storytelling, your starting point is a picture that popped in your head, or that you once saw and can't seem to forget. So you open your sketchbook with your mind asking, what in the world? Why do I have this image stuck in my head? And you're just looking to find some answers to that question. As I've mentioned in the last video, I studied visual communication in university. Before I landed on my first full-time job as a graphic designer, I had about a free year or two to experiment with comic book making. I remember it was exhilarating to begin, but very, very hard to finish. I didn't really understand why, I assumed I was just not inspired enough or that I just didn't have enough knowledge to share. So I thought I would focus on other things first and maybe revisit the craft in a later time. Seven years is a long time. I decided to give it another go in 2011. I revisited my old works to see which ones I could still find a way to resume or revivify. There were two half-big stories that still had potential so I tried recreating an outline with a pre-planned ending or moral lesson. I tried, and I soon realized I couldn't take off with it. It just didn't feel right. It felt so much like work. Yeah, that was a funny thing to observe. I realized it required a lot of work, a lot of mental gymnastics, to start off with a message and try to surround that with pretty pictures, which I hope would eventually turn into a comprehensible narrative. This was just way too much wishful thinking, I thought. It was actually very embarrassing to realize this. I had the wrong approach the entire time. That said, this was also an exciting moment. I love it when I can pinpoint exactly where I went wrong. I noticed that the approach I had with visual communication was at the very least cringeworthy when applied to writing fiction. This was the moment when I realized I was using the wrong method to produce short story comic books. I had conflated visual storytelling with visual communication. I was wrong to think they are one and the same thing. Now I have to point out that I could totally use either approaches to tell stories. We see it all the time everywhere. In fact, I think there are more visual communication happening around than there is visual storytelling. I just find visual communication harder to reconcile with the world outside my head. 
Visual communication is a great tool to promote an opinion, but that's not my goal with a short stories. So in the sense, visual storytelling uses a literary style to convey stories. It produces pictures of what is observed, whereas visual communication uses a promotional style to convey opinions. It produces pictures that tell you how to think. Okay, this sketch is almost done. Let me just do a quick comment on my paint process in this two color exercise. As I did with the one color sketch, my approach is the same here. I start off painting all areas with the lightest value, which in this case is the yellow ochre. And then I gradually introduce the burnt sienna into areas that should have darker values. And then, to get the darkest value, as I needed in the outlines, I just used burnt sienna off the tube to get full saturation. I used two photo references for this sketch, one for the kangaroos and the other for the background. The beautiful thing about working with colored pigments in a water-based medium such as gouache or watercolor is the wet-on-wet -wet technique that produces those interesting gradients that seem to have its own decisions to make. It reminds me so much of nature, because you can't have full control over it. While I love exercises on painting techniques, as a comic book artist, I'm still attached to some application of outlines. This is evident in my style, which shows a combination of painterly background with cartoon characters inhabiting them. Alright, I'll do one more sketch exercise and then we'll wrap up our discussion in the next video. Thank you for your interest in exploring this subject with me. This was fun. See you soon.